Good morning. How are you? This is the first, the first lecture that I want to give regarding AI and the business world. So it's going to be a series of uh, lectures because there is so much to say. And I also want to go back a little bit into the history of AI and also about how we how do we relate to AI and especially at this you know unusual time that what the the, re the revolution is really here. So uh, bear with me. I'm going to share the slides and uh, let's see where it takes us. Okay, here we go. So. Uh, as I said, uh, we are going to speak today, I mean, in the coming series about how AI is going to empower uh, the business world. And I want to us to, I, I, love, I love the fact that when you put things into context, it's much easier to us, for us to understand, to relate to it and so forth. So I want to remind to all of us that we are already going in the 240 last years through a series of um, a technological revolution. And the first one was, of course, uh, the steam engine. And then, of course, we had the electricity and then we had the internet. And now it's the AI era. Um, and we are, at, at least me, I'm, ex I'm extremely excited about that. But usually, I think usually what is important to get to, to understand is that whenever we are talking about a technological revolution, what it really elevates usually is fear. So, uh, so um, I don't know, but whether you, uh, when, when, if you're thinking about even about Plato, which was one of the most, you know, wonderful human being ever lived and extremely wise, you know. So what he even said, well, um, he said this: they will cease to exercise uh, their mind, uh, and they they won't use their memory because they will rely on uh, that which is written, calling things uh, to remembrance no longer uh, from within themselves, but uh, by means of external marks. And he was saying this, uh, you know, 400, 400 years before B B BC, because he was speaking, uh, he was fearful from the writing. So can you, imagine, can you imagine, can you think about your life today without writing? It's impossible, right? So still, this is what he said. So I think it's important to understand that uh, it's it's uh, it's not the first time that we are uh, ca being caught in fear uh, of technology. Today, we can't even think about ourselves without without the ability to write and especially to read. And I don't know whether we are, you are aware of it, but we have about uh, uh, thirty million people in the states that are incapable of writing. So think about it. Think about the fact that right now uh, uh, we see this as you know, like uh, uh, a, a disease that uh, should be abolished, and uh, the inability to write the illiteracy. So this is it. So just bear this in mind. And I think the other thing we should bear in mind is that we always lack. We have a lack of imagination when we are talking about about uh, technology and their impact on our world. So besides the fact that we have fear, we also don't have. Um, the imagination of uh, thinking how wh what really what will change it will bring to us. So uh, I want to remind us that even Michael Faraday, you know, he was the first one that really was playing with uh, electricity. Well, of course, we knew that there were se several people in different parts of the world doing it. But uh, while he was doing it, you know, uh, one day uh, a guy came into his room and said, you know. Uh, Queen Victoria is on her way here, and she says, "How come no one told me?" Well, she was a little she was a little bit bored, you know, um, in the um, in the palace, so she was looking for some amusement. So she comes in, you know, he's trying very quickly to arrange everything so it will be, you know, uh, suited for Her Majesty, for her royalty, so to for her position. So uh, she comes in, she says, "Please show me something interesting." He starts showing her many things, but she's very she's still very upset. She says, "Nothing. This I saw." This is not really interesting. Well, this I saw somewhere else. So anything more exciting you have to miss. So he started to showing her, he started showing her some things that he's doing with electricity. And then she says, well, wow, what is this? It's very interesting, but is it going to be useful? You know, she was a very, you know, um, I would say logic person. And he says, well, your majesty, I don't know what we are going to do with it, but definitely you're going to charge a tax on it one day. 
So I think it's very interesting. And when we're talking about Edison, when he created the phonograph, you know, he lost his father and he wasn't able to be with him while uh, it was happening. So, you know, he was, he had remorse about that. So he created this machine because he thought when he was asked why he created this is because I want people to be able to ha have the ability to listen again and again to the, to the last words of, of the beloved one while he's departing from the world. So right now, of course, as we know, we are not using this. Think about all this music industry and think about what was the reasoning. So it's very interesting to look at it. And the last one, of course, is Timothy John uh, Burns Lee, which when he started, you know, he was he started the, the, the ARPANET, which became, of course, then the internet. And uh, is to remind us all, he did because there was a, a risk. I mean, at least there was a perceived risk that uh, the Soviet Union will try to crash the telephone system, uh, which was the main communication system in the States during the Cold War. And then he said, well, if this is going to happen, well, we have to have another meal to communicate. And then they created this uh, um, kind of network between computers, which was in the beginning was only in the army. And then they gave it also, of course, to the universities, to the um, to the educational, I mean, the higher educational uh, sector. And then when he heard that uh, they're going to take it out of the hands of, of, of the few and give it to the common people and that millions or perhaps even billions of people are going to use it, he says, oh, this is rubbish. It won't be. It won't be working. So he says, if by 1999 the internet will not collapse, well, I'm gonna eat. I'm going to chew this article that I'm writing about. That he wrote, uh, you know, a very, very angry, uh, full with resentment uh, article about uh, the the idea. Uh, uh, on him, on his behalf, in is him on on it's worth that while saying that at 1999 he got on stage. He took uh, his. Um, his article and he brought a uh, um, mixer or whatever it was it with water, he mixed it and he simply drank or ate <laughs> the way, either way you want to look, relate to it, to the, um, to um, his article. So I think, I, I think the fact that we are so fearful from uh, uh, the technology that, you know, it's, uh, we are accumula accumulating. So we do, we do very good exponential work with our fears. So then we build a wall. So it's nearly impossible to see beyond uh, this wall of fears of what are going to be the, um, I would say, prosper, prosper loss, or perhaps I would say the potential loss. So uh, we are incapable of seeing what are the potential uh, I would say benefits of any kind of new technology. So I think this is a, this is important to know. Now uh, the second thing is that we lack of imagination, so we can't really see because you know we th think about, uh, for example, the the cell phone. Uh, well, at least when I got myself my first cell phone, the th the first thing I thought, well, oh, wonderful! I'm going I'm going to be much more efficient now, and it's going to be much. Uh, easier to communicate. And then, of course, when we had the internet, wow, I can use the internet. But I never thought that all my life I'm going to be, you know, uh, I would say encapsulated into this small uh, device that I'm going to carry with me and I won't be willing to leave the house without him. And more than that, if, I'll, if I have the feeling or the, the, the smallest fear that I lost it, you know, it's 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 a little bit. I'm getting a, a little bit panicky. You know, I'm I'm getting a little panic because you know, who am I and what am I going to do without this device, which is really encapsulating a uh, very important um, part parts of my life. So I think this is the first thing uh, I want to put uh, on the table here. The second thing I want to put today is that. Um, is that even though we are usually being driven by fear or by lack of understanding or inability to imagine what it's going to bring into the future, I think what is very interesting regarding a, a chat GPT-3, of course, is the fact that uh, we rushed into it. Uh, it was the opposite of usually what's happening because look what, when you're looking at this chart, you know, how, how long would it, did it take to any kind of these companies to reach one uh, uh, million users, not billions, okay, look at it. So uh, Netflix, it took three and a half years, Kickstarter two and a half years, Airbnb two and a half years, Twitter two years, uh, uh, Foursquare four, 13, 13 months, 
Facebook, which was, was you know, a huge thing back then, uh, 10 months, uh, Dropbox, it took like seven months, Spotify, five months, Instagram, two and a half months. How long do you think it took? Chat GTP, five days, five days. Email. I think it's amazing. And I want to show you another chart relating to that. And, and this is the amount of visitors that we had. Well, um, I know that right now we even got to two, 2 billion visitors and I think it, it dropped back. This is what I think in June and in July it dropped back to 1.6, you know, uh, I think um, users or visitors, depends on how you look at it, how you define it. But it doesn't really matter because what I'm so happy about it is that is that the fact that we uh, we overcome our fear of technology, and I think this is unusual. Why is it so unusual? Because if you go back, and you go back uh, two hundred years ago, and you look at the amount of people who were capable of reading and writing, it was less than twelve percent of the population. Even though, even though, the printing press was already um, used for about 240 years, at least. Gutenberg, I mean, the discussion, whether we, you know, whether we invented it at uh, uh, 1415 uh, or 16, it doesn't really matter. But this is what I call the uh, missed uh, opportunity or the missed revolution. Because let's assume that around today that we about, you know, about more than 90% of the population, you know, the worldwide population are capable of reading and writing. Think what would have happened to the world if this amount of people were capable of reading and writing in the beginning of the 18th century. How the world would have looked totally different. This is my belief. So I wanna end today with this. We'll meet soon, but I think this is uh, this is what I wanted to talk to tell to you today. So that's it. Wishing you a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you.